What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from Dawson Speak TV and D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, subscribing, and sharing the videos on this channel. Much love to those who support this channel by donating. I appreciate it. All that information is in the description box underneath the video. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. All right, thanks for clicking on the video. Now, this video is for educational purposes, and as I approach this topic with respect, I want you all to please, please, please be respectful in my comment section. Thanks. Now, before I get into this story, I want to say that Dawson Speaks TV does not discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion, gender, gender expression, age, national origin, disability, marital status, sexual orientation, military status, or political affiliation. Now, these stories are from all over, all right? So let's start with this one first. Popular gospel artist Yolanda Adams sat down for an interview with People Magazine where she talked about how her style of dressing has always been criticized by some individuals in the church and also some of her fans. Yolanda fired back and she said, and I'll quote her verbatim here, because I don't have the typical gospel singer body. <laughs> I think it was easy for me just to pick out what I wanted and then just to wear what I wanted. End quote. <laughs> Let me say this. Yolanda, are you trying to be shady? <laughs> Yolanda said that she doesn't have the typical gospel singer's body. Can you all tell me, what is the typical gospel singer's body? I mean, honestly, somebody get down in the comments and tell me. But be respectful because I know how some of y'all can get in this comment section. But you all know how we got to move in the comment section, all right? Let me go on. So Yolanda Adams concluded her interview with People Magazine by saying, and I'll quote her verbatim here, I didn't know there was a thing of you can't wear this and you shouldn't wear that and you need to cover your head and stuff like that. So when people started saying, I don't know about that dress, well, okay. And now all of a sudden, these are the same people who are now fans. And they'll say, I've been with her since day one. No, you didn't. Cut it out because I remember. End quote. So you all, basically Yolanda Adams is saying that she doesn't care what people have to say, nor does she have time for fake people. And I don't blame her because neither do I. Because I tell you, if you come in my life to aggravate, God has given me the power to evacuate. Take a breath. Yes, that's a Dawson original. If you come in my life to aggravate, God has given me the power to evacuate. You don't have to listen to and be around negativity. All right? Now, Yolanda Adams looks good to me. She's 63 years old, and she looks phenomenal. Now, when it comes to fashion for women in the gospel music industry, some women in the gospel music industry, as well as some women who are pastors, many of them are criticized because of what they wear. For example, influential spiritual leader, Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. You all know Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. I know you do. I know you do. Popular YouTube vlogger Carlos King calls Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts the Beyonce of gospel, <laughs> of preaching, or whatever he said. Okay, Carlos, if you said it, we'll go with it. Look here. Pastor Sarah Jakes has been criticized for some of the things that she chose to wear in the past, even though she's been featured in a lot of magazines, on TV, and has a major platform. Pastor Sarah Jakes has said it's never about the looks. It's always about her assignment to reach the least, the lost, and the left out around the world for the Lord. Same thing with Dr. Jamal Bryant's future wife, Dr. Carrie over there. She's been criticized. <laughs> oh my God, they just rip her apart. Why y'all do that to Dr. Carrie? There's so many people who said, oh, look how she dresses. Oh, she's had cosmetic surgery. Who cares? Well, Dawson, it looked like Dr. Carrie had a BBL. Okay, sure. Are you upset? Do you want one? I mean, really? Let the lady live. Man, my brother over there, Marcellus over there, Mad Church Disease. <laughs> hey, shout out to Marcellus and Mad Church Disease over there. Go check him out. Marcellus said in one of his videos I was watching, he said when it comes to Dr. Carey, compared to some of these other people who had BBLs, at least her BBL took. And I say, amen to that. It sure did take it. It sure did. But that's if she had one. I don't know for sure that she had cosmetic surgery, but a lot of people were throwing that out there because she's a gorgeous woman. The lady is just gorgeous, y'all. And so, you know, it could be natural. Hey, maybe she was born with it. She get it from my mama. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let me move on. 
So you all leave Yolanda Adams alone, leave the rest of these ladies alone, and let them serve the Lord. Because i got to go on to the next topic. Now these next two stories come out of the same state, so we're going to make a stop over here in North Carolina, Mebane, North Carolina. Now this man you all see on your screen is none other than Pastor Jeffrey Dwayne Smith. There he is. This year, Pastor Jeffrey Smith and his wife, First Lady Smith, celebrated 40 years, 40 years of marriage. Now, many people in the community and at that church looked up to Pastor Smith. They enjoyed his sermons, his spiritual advice, and on the outside looking in, it appeared that he and First Lady Smith had a wonderful marriage. However, that all changed this month, September 2024, when Pastor Jeffrey Dwayne Smith made a stop at the local Walmart. Now, according to officers, Pastor Jeffrey Dwayne Smith, 67 years old, approached a man in the men's restroom of Walmart in Mebane, North Carolina, and touched him inappropriately. <laughs> That's too nice. He grabbed the man. Yes, the pastor who's been married 40 years went to Walmart just for this. Now, Pastor Smith fled the scene. He was later apprehended behind a gas station in the woods. Yes, Pastor Smith ran into the woods. Man, Pastor Smith, look here. <laughs> First you in the bathroom looking for wood, and then you run into the woods and you still got caught. Pastor Smith, you dealing with wood ain't no good. Maybe God is trying to tell you something, man. You better stay out of them woods. Now look here. I know we can make a joke about this here and there, and a lot of people who posted online, they were making jokes. But as I've said this before on this particular show, this is one of the reasons why I don't believe in the ex-gay movement. I don't. Because of situations like this with this pastor. Because when individuals like this, when they backslide, they're never going to backslide and go back to the opposite sex. They're going to do what they truly desire. Only one that gets hurt in a situation like this is the wife. And I know somebody's going to say, well, Dawson, what do you believe? Well, if you follow this show, you know what I've said so many times on this particular topic. I've seen so many women in the church get hurt by stuff like this. So I think for people who are so-called struggling with their sexuality, what would make more sense to thinking people and to, I don't, you know, I'm just say thinking people, is if you would say, based on my religious beliefs, I choose not to act on this. But when you tell people that you're delivered, delivered from something, and you go back and do it, or you get caught up in stuff, people looking at you like, how many times you need to be delivered? Did the first deliverance not take? I mean, come on. Now, there have been people who've come out and said that the pastor and his denomination have spoke out negatively in the past against individuals who are same gender loving. But yet... You are in a Walmart bathroom trying to have same gender loving experiences <laughs> with someone who doesn't want you. They didn't go to the restroom for that. And then here's one that'll get you. What about the kids? I mean, really, I shop at Walmart. Families go to Walmart and this is what you do. See, if it was anyone else, we'd be protesting and having, oh, well, you know, keep them trans out of the bathroom. Keep them drag queens out of the bathroom. But where's the outcry, you all, when we have a pastor, a man of the cloth, married, been married 40 years, and he's in the restroom doing this? And it seems like people just want to sweep this story under the rug, but not on my watch. You all know I'm going to talk about it no matter what. Get down in the comment sections. Let me know what you think about this story, because I got to go on to the next one. Now, we're still in North Carolina with this next story, but now we're in High Point, North Carolina. This man on the screen is Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson, 37 years old, was originally apprehended in January of 2023 and charged with having inappropriate interactions with a youngin. Oh man, keep your hands off these youngins. Now, according to court documents, Pastor Johnson has been behind bars since last January 2023, and he's written many letters to the clerk of court since then, asking for a bond motion to reduce his sentence. His most recent letter to the clerk of courts was on September 3rd, 2024, asking for a second chance. But sir, you're not getting a second chance. And in court last Friday, the judge threw the book at him. Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson will serve nearly 35 years for the crime. Man, you know what? I'm talking too much. I think we need to hear a word from Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson. Don't you? As a matter of fact, 
I think it's apropos. So I'm going to sit back and I'm going to let you all watch this video and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. And you all know me. I'm Dawson and I won't hold back. <laughs> Wow, man. <laughs> Let me say this, y'all. To his family members, church members, and supporters, I know you all love Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson. I know you do. And many of you were expecting a different outcome in this case. And some of you were audacious enough as to post things on social media after he was sentenced saying, you know, we still love you, Pastor. God's got you. Don't worry. Praying for you, Pastor. But my question to all of you is this. What about the victim? No prayers for her? Does God still have her? Is there any love for that 14-year-old he did? Come on, y'all. Church members, supporters, talk to me. What about that? Well, Dawson, maybe the little girl was fast. Maybe the boy was too mannish. Maybe he had a little sugar in his tank. All that stuff, I'm so used to y'all saying that in the comments and people saying that in general. That means nothing to the law and it means nothing to me. Remember, I worked for Child Protective Services. That mess don't cut it with me. Take your grown behind and go find another grown person to do whatever you want to do with and leave the youngins out of it. Based on the research that I've done on this pastor, Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson, you should have never stepped into anyone's pulpit until you dealt with your own trauma from your past. And based on the things that you wrote on social media, plus looking at your videos and listening to your sermons, sir, you had a lot going on in your mind and you should have gotten help earlier on in your life. Now, let me say this, you all, and I'm, I'm speaking from my heart here. Everyone is not called to be in the pulpit, in the forefront, or on stage. And you know what? It's okay. Like, really, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with not being on stage. And I believe now, more than ever, people really, you, you got to know what your purpose is, what you're called to do, and do that. Some of these individuals who are calling themselves leaders, some of them, not all, some, they're just doing it for fame. They're doing it for a check or they want control over people's lives. You weren't called to do that. Now I'm going to read a couple of posts from Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson. He posted this. The church needs more counseling than ordaining. Titles don't cover past damages. Yeah, you should know, sir. You should know. Next post. People that dig up dirt on you after you've changed your life or things are going good for you is a special type of jealousy. Sir, no one's jealous of you. People, they started digging up information on you when they heard about this situation. In the last post that I'm going to read, he said, y'all better stop choosing sides without knowing the true story. You'll be surprised how dirty some people are. People create situations and play victims. Pastor Demiro Rick Johnson, it seems to me, this is my personal opinion, that you're the one that tried to play the victim. And the judge saw through that in court and so did the rest of the people. And that's why you're in the predicament you're in now. My prayers are with the victim. My prayers are with the victim. A lot of times people, oh, well, you know, pray for the pastor. He going, no, 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 he ain't going through nothing. Pray for the victims, y'all. 
Now I'm off of this. I'm done. Get down in the comments section and go off. Let me know what you think about these topics. Please thumbs up the video, share the video with family and friends, and thank you to those who support this channel and say, Brother Dawson, you bless me, so I'm going to bless you back, my guy. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Nothing but love. Until next time, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself and each other. Peace.